So now that we have seen the different building blocks of DSPy, let's have a quick look at an example where we actually do multi-help question answering. Now a single query question answering is often not enough for complex question answering tasks. For example, if you take the task of answering about the birth city of the writer of the song right back at it again, you may not get away with just doing one round of retrieval. You will have to do two rounds of retrieval in order to answer that question. If we go to the Wikipedia page, right back at it again is sung by the vocalist Jeremy McKinnon. So if we look at his Wikipedia page, we are not able to find his birth details. But if we visit his page, then we can see that he was born on this date and he was born in Florida, US. So we need at least two rounds of retrieval in order to solve this problem. To solve this kind of problems, one of the known models is the Balina. So the architecture of Balina is with iterative retrieval and condensing. We have T rounds of retrieval. In this case, T is two. So in the first round of retrieval, a bunch of documents or a single document is retrieved and then uh, they are condensed and they go to the task specific reader and if that's not enough we actually go to another round of retrieval and the, the additional document is added with the previous document and it's condensed and it again goes to the task specific reader where we finally do the prediction. So we're going to be having a look at implementing this pipeline in the uh, DSPy multi-hub question answering. For this, the different steps involved are actually loading the language model and the retrieval model. So we need two models, one to deal with the language and the other one to deal with the uh, retrieval itself. So we need a data set in order to compile the pipeline. So we're going to be using the hotpot QA data set so this is a bunch of question answering pairs which can be used for the multi-hop question answering task. And then we're going to build uh, signatures because this is a slightly different task compared to question answering. We need unique signatures specific for this task. And then we're going to define the pipeline as a module. We're going to train the or compile the pipeline using an optimizer. We're going to be using Bootstrap FewShot for this purpose. Finally, we're going to evaluate the compiled program against the uncompiled program. And then we're going to find out what the difference between both of them are. So let's start with loading the uh, language model and the retrieval model. So for the language model, we're going to be using the Phi model from Microsoft and we're going to be using the Olama version of it, which is a four bit quantized one. And for the retrieval model, we're going to be using Colbert version two. So Colbert version two is a retriever with a free server hosting the Wikipedia 2017 abstracts search index containing the first paragraph of the articles from the 2017 dump. So it basically has the Wikipedia pages which we can readily retrieve and use in our pipeline. And for the data set, we're going to be using the hotpot data set. Again, it's a data set of question answer pass. We're going to pull the training set and the dev set. And I've just opted to use uh, 20 training samples and I've opted to use the dev size of 10, which you can feel free to use as much as you want and that's available in the data set. And then we'll have to build the signature. So once you have loaded the data, we need to start looking into building the signatures. So there are two signatures that need to be created for this uh, pipeline. So first one is the generate answer one. The signature will take the context and the question as input and give the answer as the output. So it's just three lines of code. One is for the context and the other one is for the question and the other one is for the output field, which is the answer. For the uh, generate search query, because this is a hop behavior where we have more than one sort of retrieval, we need to implement that as a signature. And to implement this hop behavior, we need to define a generate search query. And then in that, we need to write a simple search query that will help answer a complex question. For example, we have an input context and the question and then the query. So with these three, we can readily use the signature in the pipeline that we'll be implementing in the next step. So with the signatures defined, the next step is to build the pipeline. And for this, we can build a simple Berlin pipeline and inherit from the DSPy module. Now, because a pipeline is a module in DSPy, we need to inherit from the DSPy module. And we have to implement two functions, which is the init function and the forward function. In the init, we need to use the signatures that we just defined, which is the uh, generate query. And then uh, we can use the uh, generate answer signature. And then we also have a parameter, which is the maximum hops. 
So by default, it's two hops, which makes sense. Within that, we're going to be using the chain of thought, which is the generate search query for each of the hops. So for each of the hops, we are going to be generating the search query and that search query uh, will be fed as input to the uh, next stage. So whenever we get a question, we iterate through each of the hops and for each of the hop, we generate a query and that query is passed to the retriever and the passages that are retrieved by the retriever are then deduplicated and then added as context and that context is then passed to the generate answer. So the more the number of hops, the more the uh, retrieval iterations and the context will grow and grow with all the contextual information that's needed. And finally, that context gets passed to the uh, generate answer signature. And finally, we'll have the prediction through the DSPI prediction module. So once we define the pipeline, we also need to define the evaluation metric because it's the evaluation metric that the compilation process is going to optimize for. So let's see what we're going to actually evaluate. The predicted answer matches the gold answer. Now we're going to do a simple exact match between the predicted and the gold answer. And the next one we're going to do is the retrieved context contains the gold answer. Now we need to make sure that the retrieved con context is inside the gold answer. The third evaluation is none of the generated queries exceeds 100 characters in length. So if it's more than 100 characters in length, then it's probably rambling and it's no point in just proceeding further. And the last evaluation we are going to do is none of the generated queries is roughly repeated. That is none is within 0.8 or higher F1 score of the earlier queries. So basically we need to make sure that the queries are distinct and they're just not repeated too many times. So if we do all these validations and if everything passes, then we return true. Otherwise, if any of these is invalidated, we return false. So with that evaluation, we can proceed to compiling the pipeline. So compiling the pipeline is fairly straightforward. So we first need to identify what we are going to be using for the optimizer or the teleprompt. So we're going to be using Bootstrap FewShot. So we need to import Bootstrap FewShot from DSPy uh, teleprompt module. Once we have that, then we need to pass the metric that we are going to be using, which we just defined here. So we're going to pass the metric and tell it that, okay, this is the metric that I want you to optimize. And we create the object of the teleprompter. So once we have the teleprompter, we need to compile it. We need to pass the, uh, the pipeline that we just defined, which is a DSPy module. And then we're going to define the teacher. And finally, we're going to pass the training set that we just created, which is the uh, hotpot QA training set. So we have all of that and we just pass to the teleprompter.compile. And if you run that, that's equivalent to training a neural network and optimizing it. So it will compile and finally it will give you the compiled Berlin model. So once we have that compiled Berlin model, now we are at a luxury to sort of compare that against the uncompiled version. So to run the evaluation on both the compiled and compiled Berlin pipelines, we need to import the evaluate class from the evaluate module. Once we do that, we should be able to pass the uncompiled Berlin and the compiled Berlin and, and should be able to come up with a quantitative score with which we could compare directly how both of them do. But uh, in my comparison, what I found out is that the score for the uh, uncompiled version is higher than the score for the compiled version, just which, which is so which is exactly the opposite of what we are trying to achieve. So I'm suspecting that this is due to me choosing the dev set size to just 10 instead of a larger dev set. Maybe if I choose a larger dev set, then I will actually get a better score. So I will leave that as a future exercise, but for now, I think I've demonstrated the comparison between the compiled and the uncompiled versions. And I've also demonstrated how we can build a pipeline and then make it more efficient by using DSPy. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope that will be useful for some of you guys. And thanks for listening and I will see you in my next. Until then, take care.